leave rolled up when the time comes. David Davis. The uh, final gentleman leaves me with an interesting image to, uh, to start my uh, speech. Let's look at the facts, Madam Deputy Speaker. The government tells us that this is all about protecting the National Health Service. Fine. So let's start with the hard UK numbers. The number of COVID-19 patients in hospitals reached a peak of 16,612 in the UK out of 127,000 hospital beds nationwide a week or two ago. The number of patients in critical care beds reached a peak of 1,489 with a UK-wide capacity of at least 4,500. And at the recent peak of the virus, the National Health Service had 13,000 free hospital beds and 18% of critical care beds free, which is better than it usually is at this time of year, significantly better. So cause for concern because of the potential growth of the virus, but not cause for panic. Now, the government undoubtedly has to act, but it should do so on the basis of hard facts. What we're talking about today, of course, is what the government thinks of as a localised lockdown, tiers one, two and three. But we know from other studies around the world, other countries around the world, what does work and what does not. We don't have to guess. There's actually hard evidence. Some of the select committees have, have covered that hard evidence. What does work is very, very narrowly targeted interventions with intensive testing and tracking of contacts and highly localised lockdowns, highly localised lockdowns. Take Germany, who have their fair share of densely populated areas, but have a death rate of one quarter of ours. Their concept of a local lockdown may be, the, at its biggest, the city of Gütersloh, with a population of 101,000, or Warendorf, 37,000, or one meatpacking factory, 7,000, or even one block of flats, 700 people. That's what they think of as a localised lockdown. Compare that to us. We locked down Liverpool City Region, 1.5 million. Greater Manchester, 2.8 million. Yorkshire and Humber, 4.7 million. Anything but a precise lockdown. Other countries as well, like South Korea and Vietnam, have used a similarly targeted approach to contain the virus has spectacularly better results than we have achieved. South Korea has just 10 deaths per million of population. Vietnam is even more successful with about half a death per million of population. Now, these measures will undoubtedly go through today, but I will not be voting for them. When we come to vote on them, I'll expect that next time, in, uh, in uh, early February, according to the Prime Minister, I will hope they'll be massively more targeted. Restrictions on a local authority level, which we, what we have now, is not enough. We must follow the example of Germany, South Korea and others by having restrictions imposed on a much smaller area. They work better, they're fairer and they cause much less economic damage. We don't know for sure whether blanket lockdown restrictions work to suppress the virus. But what we do know for sure is the economic damage caused by such restrictions. The impact on people's livelihoods and even their mental health is absolutely clear. As my honourable friend, the Chairman of 22, said earlier, in this country we do not give up our freedoms lightly. What we need today is a policy of maximum protection for minimum damage. This policy is not it, and I hope the next iteration in February does a much better job.